The Bible teaches us that to know God and Jesus Christ is eternal life. But for us to humanly know God is an impossibility because God dwells in a light which no man can approach to. No man has seen God and God's thoughts and ways are far above our ways just as much as the heaven is above the earth. Our brains have not even perceived what is in heaven. It says that it has not entered into the eyes or into the ears nor into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. On a human level, this is a real problem to get to know God. But God needs to declare himself to us. But God can't declare himself to us because the Bible teaches that anyone that bears testimony of himself is not true. And so Jesus Christ has come to this earth to declare the Father. And that's what he said to Philip. I have come to show you the Father. But the Holy Spirit in John chapter 16, the Holy Spirit takes of Jesus and shows it to us. And we read in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1, the lineup, the chain of God's communication that he has with this planet earth. And we read in Revelation 1, Verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Do you see the chain of command? God gave it to Jesus. Jesus gives it to the angel. The angel gives it to John. And John, in verse 11, it is told, What thou seest, write in a book. And send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. So John is then to tell, as the prophet, is to tell the preachers of the church, the apostles of the church and the workers of the church, and they are to go out to the world and tell everyone about God. And that is how salvation can happen to man, this chain. Now any of the links of the chain cannot be broken. Every link is important and including the prophet. And this chain of command is so important that if we break it, if we don't receive the prophet, we are in essence rejecting Jesus Christ. Because it says in Revelation 19 and verse 10, I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Here, John was about to worship an angel, and the angel says, Don't worship me. I'm your fellow servant. I have the testimony of Jesus. I have what Jesus told me. And now I'm going to tell you. I'm of your fellow brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Therefore, the prophet holds the testimony which Jesus has spoken. So if you reject the prophet, you're rejecting the words of Jesus. And so we see here in the writings of the apostles... That they saw this testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy, is of vital importance for those who are waiting for the coming of Jesus. Those who are waiting in the last days. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 5 through to 8, it says that in everything ye are enriched by him, speaking of Jesus, in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Here the apostles were confirmed in the testimony of Jesus. Because when Jesus was amongst them, he started at Moses the prophet and expounded on all the scriptures and all the prophets concerning himself. And that is what started the apostolic church, the Christian church. But notice it says, he confirmed them with the testimony of Jesus so that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice verse 8. Who shall also confirm you unto the end? There is a confirmation through the testimony of Jesus which must still be done, which is being done in these last days. Who shall also confirm you unto the end that ye may be blameless in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. The testimony of Jesus is of vital importance so we can be perfected before Jesus comes to claim his own. We need to know God and to know God we need that chain and part of that chain is the prophet. And so it says in Ephesians chapter 4, this is exactly what Jesus gave to the church. He says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. What for? Why did he give them this chain of command? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, 
for the edifying of the body of Christ. The work that God has placed into the hand of the prophet is of vital importance. And so here is a prophecy now that at the end day, God will send Elijah the prophet. As it says here in Malachi chapter 4 and verse 5, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. We are right in this time where, the, where this world is finished. And here... God is saying, before it all closes up, there will be a prophet at the end. And there is another fulfillment of this in the time when Jesus came. That just before Jesus came, when he declared his ministry, John the Baptist was the prophet that was to prepare the way of the Lord. But notice here, as the Apostle Peter says, and it shall come to pass in Acts chapter 2 verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Here is the prophecy. And as John the Baptist was a fulfillment of that in the time of Christ's first advent, so it will be the same in the second advent. There will be a prophet. And notice how the first one was treated. Here in Matthew 17 and verse 10, it says, And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already. And they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Did you hear what Jesus was saying? That he shall come, but he has already come. One still has to come. And here that one that came, it says, they knew him not. The religious people, the teachers, the ministers, the, those that profess to be the preachers of the world, at that day, missed the prophet that was to come. And so if they missed the prophet, then could they be part of the chain of command that was to preach to the world? No, they would miss out because they said they knew him not. And then they treated him really badly. So we expect that a prophet is to come and has come. And, it should, and that prophet will be treated badly. And as the prophet is treated badly, then it says, Likewise sh shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. If you persecute the prophet, you are persecuting Jesus and you will persecute Jesus. And so we need to really take it to heart now that, that there is a prophet that we need to accept. And here, people at the end have this statement about them. Revelation 12 and verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Here is a prophet that encourages the keeping of the commandments of God. All ten. These people keep the commandments of God and they have the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy. These people will be saved. Those that reject the prophet, reject Jesus. And if they reject Jesus, they cannot know God. And so when Jesus comes, there will be many people that will say, Lord, we did all this in your name. And he says, I didn't know you. So let us study and find out who is this prophet that has come in these last days. So we can accept it and take it, all of it, and keep the commandments of God, all ten, and have this testimony of Jesus. May the Lord bless your study. Amen.